United States. By failing to repudiate the CIA's use of torture, while adopting a UN convention that condemned its practice, the United States left this contradiction buried like a political landmine ready to explode with such phenomenal force just 10 years later in the Abu Ghraib prison scandal. Step three, perfection of the CIA's psychological paradigm. Right after his public address to a shaken nation on September 11, 2001, President Bush, after the cameras had been turned off, gave his White House staff secret orders saying, quote, I don't care what the international lawyers say, we are going to kick some ass, end quote. In the months that followed, administration attorneys translated their president's eloquent but otherwise unlawful orders into U.S. policy through three controversial neoconservative legal doctrines. One, the president is above the law. Two, torture is legally acceptable. And three, the U.S. Navy base at Guantanamo Bay is not U.S. territory. In their now notorious August 2002 memos, Assistant Attorney General Jay Bivey and his associate John Yu, about whom we heard in the film, concluded that pain equivalent to organ failure was legal, effectively allowing torture right up to the point of death. Further up the chain of command, a top national security team led by Vice President Cheney and Attorney General John Ashcroft met regularly in the White House to approve physical abuse such as wall slamming and waterboarding. This national security team authorized every CIA request for torture, and Ashcroft himself once told the agency it was perfectly legal to waterboard one detainee 119 times. Consequently, the White House authorized the CIA to build a global network of eight prisons, the so-called black sites, located in allied nations from Thailand to Poland. The White House also allowed the CIA 10 enhanced interrogation methods designed by agency psychologists, including waterboarding, a particularly cruel method that replicates drowning. Now here, we must pause because this is critical. This is the most extreme of the Bush administration torture techniques. So here we must ask, is waterboarding a perfectly legal enhanced technique, just a little dunk of water, as Vice President Cheney once called it, or is waterboarding so cruel that it constitutes torture? After French paratroopers tortured him with this technique, which the French called the water pipe, during the Battle of Algiers in 1957, a French journalist named Henri Allègre wrote a moving description of this method in a book that turned France against torture and indeed the Algerian war. I quote, I tried by contracting my throat to take in as little water as possible and to resist suffocation by keeping air in my lungs for as long as I could. But I could not hold on for more than a few moments. I had the impression of drowning and a terrible agony, that of death itself, took possession of me. Now let's think for a second about the deeper meaning of Alec's sparse words, a terrible agony, that of death itself, took possession of me. Although written years, decades, before science discovered this cognitive reflex, Alec's word, words were an eerily accurate summary of something called the mammalian diving reflex. This is a deep-seated fear hardwired into the human brain that allows infants when plunged into cold water to survive and emerge from water, total drowning, complete submersion, not for, without any brain damage, not for three minutes, not for five minutes, not for 15 minutes, but for up to 20 minutes. So afraid is the human organism of this cold water over the mouth that we have this reflex hardwired into us. As waterboarding blocks air to the lungs, the human organism's powerful mammalian diving reflex kicks in and the brain is racked by the most horrifically painful panic signals imaginable to the organism. Death, death, death. Then the victim vomits water, the lungs suck air, the fear recedes, the panic subsides, and then it happens again and again. 119, 132, 187 times in one month, inscribing the searing trauma of near death in human memory 
and producing one of the most extreme forms of pain imaginable, the visceral fear of death itself, the ultimate fear, the one fear that nobody can ever really conquer. In late 2002, Defense Secretary Rumsfeld appointed General Jeffrey Miller to command Guantanamo with a wide latitude for interrogation, making this prison an ad hoc behavior.